hearing noise, we heard that. Uh, so we're using a backup mic uh, just for today while we figure out that whole uh, issue with our mic. So please bear with us. We saw a white shape scampering away. <laughs> So we suspect that, as many of you do, that Bill is perhaps has been chewing on the cables, much like Furcorn was wont to do in the early days of My Singing Monsters. So we'll have to investigate that after the fact. But thank you for sticking with us if you did. And if you're just joining us now, uh, welcome to a special edition of My Singing Monsters Live, where we will be tackling Q&A. Questions and answers. That's right. Uh, like we were saying before, uh, we had great, uh, great questions that were being asked. So many questions that were being asked last uh, Friday, or last third, no, last Friday. That's right, during our inaugural episode yes. of My Singing Monsters Live. Yes, and many of you also took the survey, which was super helpful, and we got a ton more questions there. And um, so, yes, as Matt said, this is a special episode, kind of a, a one-off, where we just wanted to do a direct Q&A, get more questions uh, answered from you guys. We're going to be taking a lot of them from the chat. But the first few will be from uh, last week's episode and some of the survey questions we got. Before we launch into those, um, we promised that we would yes. be expanding the number of monster giveaways in this stream uh, to make up for our technical issues to two. But through the generosity of the <laughs> monster handlers, and hopefully monster handler Sydney uh, is on board with this as well, yes. we're going to be upping the number two, three. Which and we're going to give away one right now. That's right and another one uh, throughout the show, and then, of course, our one at the end. So we actually do have the first winner. All right, and uh, Michael, are you ready to yes. announce it? The first winner, thank you for sticking with us, uh, is Mags to the Max. So congratulations, excellent, excellent. Um, so yeah, we're, we're super excited about that. Um, and so just some more getting back to this isn't a normal show. What we are gonna do going forward, though, is we're gonna have a weekly show every Friday starting at 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That was one of the big things that people said. Is, During the, sur the survey yes. results that we collected. Yes, they wanted it one, later, and two, uh, overwhelmingly people would prefer a Friday show, so we are going to give you a later show every Friday. That said, we had so many great questions asked, we figured that we would start to tackle them today in a special edition episode of My Singing Monsters Live. Yeah, and you know, maybe there will be some more one-off uh, uh, episodes here and there, but you know what, let's just get started with the question. All right. Enough of us. That's what, that's what they came here to say. Yes. Uh, so the first question comes <clears throat> from Flummy Flummox. Hey Matt, during the years of being a part of BBB, what monster in My Singing Monster seems to be most like you? Most like me? I don't know if anyone's asked me that question before. Thank you for the question, Flummy Flummox. So consider it. Um, certainly, as many of you know, I have provided the voices for several of the monsters. Uh, half of Mammoth, Octopus, Potbelly, Fog, among them. And I think a little bit of my personality, uh, yeah, sort of is infused into each of those monsters. When I, you know, I, I'm sure as many of you do like to play with silly voices. <laughs> Uh, many of those end up becoming the uh, uh, the whole character of, of, a, of a brand new yeah. creation, like a, like a singing monster. Um, to answer your question specifically, though, is there one that, that most fits me, that, that best matches my personality? I, I think that there might still be something on the horizon uh, that uh, better encapsulates mm. the experience that is Matt. Mm. So, but but uh, I, I can't think of... Uh, Anything yeah. right now, but right. Any 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 further details might might come to me at a later date, but well, uh, I, I I guess we'll see. So um, if I had to answer right now, I think octopus okay. is one that I think really I, I connect with and that I have affinity with, just because uh, that like raspy quality, sort of like uh, an old man of the forest. You're an old man quality. of the forest. <laughs> I am an old man of the forest, one who has all of the questions and answers uh, ready to go. So, and, and, who, and who provides sort of a role model figure to mm -hmm. others, with the uh, notable exception of the rare octopus, which, as we know, all know, of course. is a mad scientist mad scallywag. <laughs> so, I will say a common octopus. Octopus they is, sound alike, is the one that when, when he does start, or when it does start singing, that is definitely the one I think I hear you the most instantly. So, I think that I would say the same, but, you know, there you never go. know. There's always new monsters to discover in the world, right? Yeah. I think the pot belly sounds most like me 
at rest mm -hmm. when I'm just speaking. Because mm -hmm. the, the pot belly is just a very nasally monster, despite the fact that it has no discernible <laughs> nose. Uh, okay, this next one, sorry if I um, screw up any of these names. I'm going to go with Regeran346. Um, does rare Cybop idolize the rare gel belly? Like how common Cybop idols common gel belly? Um, this is an interesting relationship that's been forged between these two different species Very of monsters because, of course, they're in neighboring dimensions. They never actually occupy uh, the, the same, same space. space. Um, that, of course, does not stop uh, monster shipping from being able to deliver fan mail nope. between dimensions. They have technology exactly. that, that's pretty uh, advanced. complicated and advanced, yes. But while the common Cybop idolizes common gel billy, the relationship between rare Cybop and, in fact, all gel billies is a little different. Rare Cybops march or hover, mm -hmm. in this instance, to the beat of a different drum. And they're far more interested in uh, transfiguring their bodies to look like very, very ancient cave drawings of early Cybops that uh, perhaps were from the Dawn of Fire. We're not sure yet, though, because as many of you know, the Cybop has not yet been discovered no. as a species in Dawn of Fire. So um, when it does appear, I'll be very yes. curious to see what it looks like because, again, um, cave drawings themselves can be sort of uh, abstract and representational of stuff and sort of miss out on fundamental details. Mm -hmm. So when the Cybop does eventually come to Dawn of Fire, it'll be very interesting to see what it looks like since rare Cybop claims to be representing its look and yes. feel based on that one. Yeah, yeah. Um, another one here from Max Lee was taken. Uh, is Ethereal Island submerged in water? Interesting question. Ethereal Island, so far as I know, uh, has an atmosphere mm -hmm. that is not underwater, that is not submerged. However, the very nature of Ethereal Island is otherworldly, yes, is, is, is alien. It is definitely alien. To that us. is the perfect description. I think you can really tell by the skyscape that appears behind Ethereal Island that it's almost more like it's an object in space. But obviously, gravity is still an issue, play, yeah. and and uh, you know the bubbles that are appearing. I don't know if bubbles can appear in an open space environment. I, that, that that brand of, of physical sciences um, is not uh, at the foremost of my monster hand of dreams. Well, and also, who's to say that um, you know gravity and, and, and physics and all that are the same? That's a very good point. The monster world and we do know that world. we do know that magic, and or uh, a different branch of science unknown to the human world could be at play here. So, uh, to answer your question, Ethereal Island is not submerged underwater, but its specific nature is definitely one that we wouldn't be used to experiencing. Yes. Um, Here's a very interesting one. This one comes to us from the survey. Thank you again for taking the survey. It was very helpful. Um, if you didn't take it, you can always go back and look at the social post and retake it. Uh, what is it like inside a castle? I know you've been there before. Um, the castle, well, it's, it's secondhand accounts. Okay. It's based on the information in interviews with, with monsters oh. or some sort of uh, data that was collected. Uh, a long time ago, but we know that as a castle upgrades, it gets various improved features. Yes. We know that as uh, more beds are added, uh, different other elements of luxury are added. That can be things like indoor plumbing finally gets added at some point. There are cold slime pools, dark, nasty dungeons, the kind of things that monsters really enjoy. I for so, so, slime so, pool. Right, exactly. So it's 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 different than. The creature comforts you might expect from a human hotel yeah. or from a human castle, but of course for monsters it's perfectly fine. And then as you progress even further, there are personal assistants that wait on the monster's hand and foot, for those of them that have hands and feet, of course. And also a state-of-the-art uh, monster sound system yeah. that appears. So there are all kinds of elements to it that I think we find comfortable and other elements that we wouldn't find comfortable. Much like I'm sure if they were here. 
Exactly. There would be a little bit of acclimatization that would have to take place. This next one gave me a good chuckle. Okay. Um, it is from, this is, we're now going to live questions from right. the chat. Uh, so it's from Jacob's Oof. Uh, and it is, if you had to live with one monster, who would you live with? Who would be your monster roommate? A monster roommate. I got my, I got my answer. Okay, well, well, I mean, this is specifically a Q&A with the Monster Handlers and the yes. Monster Handler Matt. But while I think of my answer, yes. Michael, why don't you give your answer? Well, Matthew, I am a man who likes tea. You know what else I like? I like pizza. And something that we've learned from uh, previous social posts is a Mr. Noggin is great at baking. That's so true. Specifically. So would love somebody who was my own, you know, somebody who could really make up a nice uh, pizza pie. Uh, well, that'd be great to have a culinarily uh, skilled monster at play. Um, for some reason, the one that, that sprung to mind for for me was Quibble. Okay. Just because I love the sound that the Quibble makes, okay. and I think it'd be interesting. While it would certainly be a never a dull moment when the two heads are arguing among each other, um, I think maybe I could play sort of like a, a mediator between the two. <laughs> And I could uh, maybe uh, settle their arguments or resolve the differences. Another one, another one that would be good as well um, would be Geode, because when I need, uh, when I have, uh, I want someone's opinion on something, or I'm having an argument with someone else, the Geode, as we know, harnessing the ethereal power of Crystal, is able to see all sides uh, uh, of a scenario yes, of and course. somehow come up with a, a, a resolution that pleases everybody. So it'd be great. I think you barely ever have any fights or arguments or disagreements with anybody with the geode as a roommate. Uh, and one other thing, I would love to live with a pango. A pango? No, I love pango so much. And so. you could help pango with its self-esteem. And, and right? you could yes. you could deliver messages of goodwill to yes. that poor little. And animal. I just think we would look so cute together with our little scarves. Well, Especially very and, true. You could you could you could match yourself fashion wise. And pango, pango would fit in perfect here with it being so cold. Up in Canada. That's right. And we're starting to get the snows here. Yes, as, as much early snow as, today. as early as uh, early November. So, um, good. another question live question in from Bogart fan. What was the first fire element monster created besides Gina? It was Gina. So besides Kena, I think one of the very first fire element monsters that was drawn up from a concept art standpoint was Flawa. Okay. And... Uh, Big muscular. Yeah, and at that point we weren't necessarily sure what direction we wanted to go in for the personality of Flawa, but we liked the idea, I think, of a sunflower looking monster that had a bit of attitude. Because sunflowers are typically bright and, uh, so you want to and go sunshiny in attitude. Exactly. Something that, that people weren't necessarily expecting. That's good. Um, ooh, here's a good one. Uh, from the Monster Explorers. All right. Have any monsters ever considered making a sweater from Willoughby's wool? Because the Willoughby, you know, does he make a, a business off of, you know, I'm sure at some point he grows his wool, right? Well, the, the Willoughby, uh, much like the, the sheep of the human world, have exactly. that thick coat upon them. Um, and I know that there is a little bit of uh, stitching and needlework that happens uh, certainly during the era of Dawn of Fire. There are scarves that are knit. Yes. There are there are glittery scarves. There are, there are specific items that the monsters want and uh, and that request as part of their monster mm -hmm. wants system. So it wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. I expect it would be quite comfortable to the touch. It looks very comfortable. And I also think that probably because of the magical properties of the Willoughby's uh, woolen fur it would probably be very warm soft but very lightweight Ooh. which would make it obviously a perfect article of clothing to wear very very nice i mean i wish i had one right now yeah same um okay um stack of wubblins uh -huh. asks can you do an impression of monsters you provide the voice for oh for sure i believe we also uh did something like this during our extra life yes i believe there was some, some of that um, 
if anyone has any specific uh, requests for various island parts they want to hear, uh, for now I'll just do uh, the plant island parts uh, respectively, but here we go. Uh, everyone's favorite cold elemental mammoth. Excuse me, I burped. <laughs> That's sort of like man. Right? How exactly? You that is definitely a man. I belch. You, you have to get into the character. That's right. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Boom, 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 <laughs> boom, boom. There you go. There's mammoth, and now we have. <coughs> excuse me. Now we have, uh, fog. <clears throat> wow! 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 Michael's enjoying it at least. Let us know in the in the oh chat goodness. if you're enjoying it. It's so strange seeing you say it. Next though. up is octopus. Here we go. This this, this, might, my this, baby, might, this might raise the hair on the back of your neck. Here we go. I thought it, I thought a big old tree was next to me. <laughs> and finally, fod belly. We've got. Bam. I was really getting into that one. There you go. Um, thank you for those. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Uh, my singing mammoth asks, where does the sky ship go when it's not at the concert? We see that sky ship taking off to go make some deliveries. And, and, and departing. Yes. The, uh, the monster world is vast and a lot of it unexplored. We know that the continent rests in an infinite expanse. Okay. Um, so when the skyship does eventually depart and disappears over the curve of the horizon, uh, it, I think we lose contact with it and the deliveries that it makes are two mysterious entities, the likes of which we have not yet uh, even heard or identified. Hmm. So we do know that it makes routine trips. So we're not sure what its trajectory looks like if it's actually passing around the entire uh, planet. If, 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 it, if, it, if it is in fact a planet, the monster world, uh, there's still many aspects of its uh, geography, of its physical nature uh, that remain a mystery. Yes. Uh, the skyship um, must be docking somewhere. You would, you would expect to, to make these deliveries. It's I not assume just like dropping them over the uh, over the living yes. ocean. Yes, that would be uh, cool. Double. That, well, that would be a waste of all the hard work that users put into yes. filling up their skyship orders. So exactly. they're they're going somewhere. We just don't know where. I think that's the exciting thing about the monster world of just how much there's more left. there is to to explore and discover. Absolutely, right? it certainly ended. continues to uh, to pique the interests of the monster handlers. That's for sure. Uh, this comes from Lord Galvana. Will more monsters be added to My Singing Monsters Composer? My Singing Monsters Composer was a project that we were very interested in uh, fine tuning. Get it? That's a uh, Fine tuning do, do. the experience of Composer Island in My Singing Monsters and expanding upon it. So, since we've launched My Singing Monsters Composer, we've added yep. the Dipsters. Dip, and dip. We, and very good. Dip, dip. And we, of course, uh, in the most recent update, have added instrumental rares, which uh, notably make new sounds other than their common counterparts. Yes. That was a big uh, differentiation. Between. That's right, between between My Singing Monsters uh, Composer Island and My Singing Monsters Composer, Proper. the app. Um, I think that there's more to discover there. We're... Uh, we're certainly thinking about it. We're working on it. We're and you know, about it. as with all things, if there are specific things that people really want, like if we keep hearing that people want certain types of monsters, that is something that can rise to the top. So we're always looking for, for feedback, for, for feedback, your suggestions exactly. and commentary. It helps us know what sort of things you'd be interested in. Uh, another one uh, from Plummy Flummox. I know we had the one from a previous episode, mm -hmm. but. Do some flum oxen choose to walk rather than float? Huh. So far as I know, every specimen observed of flum ox is possessed of the ability to float. And if you could float, would you, would wouldn't you? you do so all the time? Um, I think because of the peculiar physiology of the flum ox, the fact that, they, that their legs mm -hmm. are sort of 
you know, they're where their legs would be, but they're also sort of like their only pair of limbs. I think that they can manipulate things. It's not a lot of motor control, but I think they can manipulate things with their, with their horns. Mm -hmm. But um, I think it's easiest for them to keep their feet free mm -hmm. for grasping things or for interacting with the rest of the monster That's great. world. I wish I had that. Instead of using them to amble along. So I believe that all known specimens do float in lieu of walking. Could you imagine, you know when you've been like sitting somewhere high up in your legs or just dangling, mm -hmm. and then you, you jump down and the, the tingle you get all throughout your legs because you know, they've been without circulation. That's right. What would that feel like for that first jumping down for fawns? Well, after not I, using them for so long? Like it would... I, I assume it would be jarring. Yeah. I, <laughs> I, I assume that they would uh, that they would need to sort of Get back Easy to the swing of things. And, yeah. I, and, I, and I believe that when a flummox is asleep, it, it rests upon the ground. Yes. So at least with the contact made with whatever surface it is nearby, really it, exactly, it can sort of stretch out, maybe, uh, you know, uh, do some stretches and then they'll feel better. This next question comes from Monster Handler Mike, aka myself. You jogged it in my memory. Oh, right? okay. Um, if you could become a monster, for one day, any monster, what would it be? You can take form of any monster. Ooh, that's a loaded question. I know. Eh? Uh, the one that springs to mind for me is the Wublin Dwemroll, because that is very a very interesting uh, answer. Like just because know. I myself am a drummer, okay. am a percussionist. It's okay. one of my uh, pastimes. Many talents. Music. One, one of one of my pastimes. Oh, thank you. Saying talents, I, I choose to say pastimes. Um, and how great would it be to have that many arms in order to play as many different parts of a drum kit? That would be very cool. as possible. So I think I'd like to spend a day as a drum roll and uh, perform the best drum solo that anyone has ever witnessed. That's a very good answer. And how about you? Well, I mean, like my go-to answer is going to be like anyone that could fly, because. Oh, that'd be very cool. You like fly. you you enjoy the the idea yeah. of the power of flight. I do enjoy the idea of the power of flight, but then I was also thinking um, when you said uh, drum roll, how I, I thought of uh, Pixelotl, the whole walking on your hands. I thought that that would just be just very fun. Mm -hmm. You're like, hey, look what I can do, everybody. But I think because the Wublins are so diverse mm -hmm. in their shapes and size, being any number of them would be quite the experience, yeah, cool. an unforgettable experience. Yes. Um, okay, this comes from uh, Twitch Prime Liam DeBell. I think it's I think it might be Liam DeBell, and this uh, is is the breeding structure slash hatching structure a plant? I think that it has uh, plant infrastructure. Okay. I think that it's sort of built into part of one of the native plants in the monster world oh. and one that's particularly hardy because it can survive obviously various uh, ecosystems, various yeah, biomes from, from the chilling cold of cold island all the way to the uh, molten heat of earth island. Um, so I think that while uh, the, almost like a tree house, okay. where okay. it's sort of assisted, I'm, I'm assisted by the plant um, but, but it is its own. But there structure. are but there are aspects of it that have been built into the plant, yep. rather than just being something that naturally occurs as is. I think that's a great great way to, to put it. Um, Conal Conal Rad. Sorry for these names. I'm, I apologize. <laughs> what is Screamu's paint made of? So Screamu. Being a rather dull-colored monster to begin with, it's adorns. It's it, it's not that exciting. So what it does is that it it compensates by adorning itself with different smatterings of different colors of paint, uh, much in the way that different uh, path tiles throughout the monster world are colored by various things, from the moss of an Ebrat's horns, uh, the earwax of a Deej. Uh, there are various uh, substances in the monster world that can tint things different colors. Now, of course, 
as we previously mentioned, because Wobbling Island is, is isolated from the rest of the island system of the monster world, uh, presumably Screamy was sourcing all of these different uh, tinctures, anointments from different things mm -hmm. on Wobbling Island. Uh, but I have no idea what those exactly. Would be. I have no idea what those would be. But I do believe that they are sourced from various uh, natural uh, remedies and, and, and substances on Wobbling Island itself. Very interesting. Um, I'm going to ask Sydney, since we're you know maybe like halfway-ish, um, let's select another winner. From Ooh, our viewers. How exciting. Uh, and if you weren't here at the beginning, we had some technical uh, difficulties and we are not doing one, we're not doing two, but we are doing three. Three giveaways today. Um, and also, if you weren't here earlier, uh, you can win any monster of your choice with one exception, that exception being any monster that's on Gold Island. Yes. We believe that Gold Island, because it exists in a separate uh, dimension of reality, uh, exists because it rewards the hard work of players who have leveled their monsters up to the prerequisite level of 15 in order to be placed on Gold Island. So that's the only exception to the rule. Uh, any other monster is fair game. Yes, so and Sydney uh, can select that. We'll probably do another question and then jump back to whoever she has selected. If everyone could give a big old hi, Sydney, in the chat, I'm sure she would greatly I'll say it as well. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Monster Handler Sydney. Um, okay, so Strymies. The Tweed49 asks, is it possible for a Tweedle to perch on your shoulders? I suppose it depends on what level the Tweedle is. I think perhaps a Tweedle hatchling, uh, the likes of which we observe in Dawn of Fire, might be able to perch on one's arm sort of the way like a, falcon. a falcon does. Exactly, exactly. Or like another bird of prey, a raptor. My, my perch okay. on the arm. But uh, Tweedles at full size, um, I think are more akin to that of an ostrich. They're, they're big. Really? I an think ostrich? so. Ostrich? Uh, well, uh, okay. So there's a great diversity in size that exists inside of one species. This is, there's no better example You're saying of this. The, the there's, high end. There's no, exactly. There's no better example of this than the magical power of bigification. True. Right, I'm not even considering. That's right. So, so right, right. Re recalling that the uh, range that one particular monster species can be in, in in size can vary greatly. I think that you could probably get a young Tweedle on your arm, but adult Tweedles are a fair bit bigger. They could maybe hang out. On you could comfortably have a conversation. Uh, being to being with an adult Tweedle. I cannot imagine enc like encountering a Tweedle that size out in the wild. It's quite the Oof. experience. Oof. Scares me. I don't want to do that. You think that's something? How about encountering an epic Tweedle of that size? Oh my goodness! You really you think of that. You, you really have to have to prepare that's yourself. That's one of those things where you just quickly book it out of there. Or you, or you just try and uh, you know you don't point or stare and yeah, you know what? It is one of those things, right? They're, they, they're all friendly. Epic, exactly. Epic Tweedle has a, a face that not only a monster could love, that, that we've come to love uh, alongside the multitude of other monster faces that we've encountered over the years. So, we do have our second winner of the day. Ooh, Remember, if you do win, just send us a little whisper in the Twitch chat with your BBB ID and uh, any monster that you would like and we will get you started there. All right. Uh, so this next winner, do you want to say this one? Drum roll, sure. It is user Iggy Rosado. Congratulations. Congratulations, Iggy Rosado. Let us know which monster exactly. you'd like in your account. Uh, well, I, I'm very interested to, to find out if we do know what these are. I would love to, to see what the people think. Mm -hmm. you know? I love knowing what, what people uh, choose want as, to their, as their monster giveaway. I agree. Oh, wow. Uh, here we got... Shimmy Show Shammy. All right. How were the Celestials made? And to go with that question, uh, do the Celestials make the monsters? Mm. So, see, this is, there's, here's a two-parter. Two-parter. Part A, how were the Celestials made? We'll go with that, and then we'll dive uh, onto that second part. Celestials, so many of 
much of this answer can be uh, expanded upon if you visit the bio section inside each individual uh, celestial monster's bio in Dawn of Fire. Bio is rich with information. Rich with information. But generally speaking, the celestials weren't made by anyone. I believe that they sprang into being spontaneously. Okay. Um, many of them are uh, products of the sort of natural processes that they're attached to. For example, um, you know, Hornicle uh, came from the unfathomable depths of the living ocean, so it's almost like the ocean created it. And another example is uh, something like the vamp, which uh, began life as sort of an incorporeal mass of energy, but then finally create, like, crafted its own physical form out of it. So um, the the exact nature of how they Can't come be. to be is mysterious, but we believe it's related to a deep-seated connection with their respective elements. That makes sense. Um, and what was the second half of So that? to go with that, mm -hmm. uh, do the celestials make the monsters? So is it like, where did the celestials come from? Did the celestials then make the monsters? Right. I think that is what the question Shimmy Shoshami is so kindly asked us. So far as we know, the majority of the celestials, and I'll say mm, that fraction is something like 11 out of 12. The majority, it's a very specific, the majority of it's the, a very specific the majority number. of the celestials do not create life. But we know of one notable exception that has dabbled in creation. That is, Just dabbled. of course, if you read the bios, you'll know which one that is. So go read the bios. Go read the bios. Um, Hazelnut Volcano, very fun name. Uh, will the Thumpies uh, game ever be remade? So for those of you who aren't aware, before My Singing Monsters was released in 2012, Big Blue Bubble created Thumpies, which was an oddball rhythm game, uh, which uh, was formatted uh, in the, the Great Tree in the Thumpyverse had various songs that you could unlock and yes. then also various subspecies of thumpies that you could use in order to perform these songs. Um, it's been a long time since we uh, provided support for that game. Um, as of right now, there are no plans to remake it. Um, but if that's something that you'd be interested in, feel free to write into us and express exactly. that that's something that you'd be interested in listening to. Never uh, say never. That's right. And the, and the Thumbies game was um, a lot of fun. And we were excited to be able to bring some of the best aspects of Thumbies into the monster verse as sort of a spiritual continuation yes. of all the creativity that was inside the Thumbies game. Um, and I do have another question that had been bolded and made large for me, Sydney, uh, from the Monster Explorers. I keep hearing Matt say the living ocean. Oh. What is the living ocean? The living ocean is the name that we, as monster handlers, have given the ocean that appears in the monster world because it has qualities that are unusual, that are, <laughs> to say alien, least. that are alien to us. If you go and check the bio for Water Island, uh, it, it mentions that it is situated in the living ocean. If you look at Hornicle's bio, it mentions that it has this relationship with the living ocean. And it's basically the name that we give this landmark in the monster world to make sure that we know uh, that we're not referring to, for example, an ocean that appears yes. in the human world. Exactly. It's not the Atlantic. That's right. It is the monster world's living ocean. And it's so named because it has unusual properties. Properties. Yeah. Uh, Abed Shark 100 asks, what do you think is I think Oh, I uh, explored. Yes. What do you think is explored more? The human world's ocean or the monster world? So have we combed the depths of the ocean here more in our world, or, or have we explored more of the monster world? I'll put it to you this way. The one landmark that we know of inside the landmark of the living ocean is Water Island. 
and that's about it. Okay. It is noticeably and notably unexplored. Um, we have been able to uh, explore certain areas of the human world ocean, but as many of you know, the oceans of the human world also remain largely unexplored. There Pretty are big. things. There are things. It, it's hard to understand how know. big it is. Yes, exactly. Right? We don't know how. We don't know how much of the ocean here hasn't been explored necessarily. Right? That's right, like, because of the very nature of what it is, how inhospitable it is for us to go down there to those incredibly unfathomable depths. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think to answer your question, if you thought that the human world's ocean was unexplored. It's got nothing on the monster world. There's very little of it that's been explored. Uh, D underscore warrior asks, which monster is the smartest monster? Who's got the best noodle? Mm. I'm going to have to say Repro. You got, you got the big noodle. You know, there's no better way to check that it is smart than the fact that it is itself a brain. And the exosuit, that the mech suit that it creates is just sort of an augmentation of the brain power that it has. Uh, the Rebro also is incredibly tech savvy. And uh, if we'd had one around, we might have been able to figure out our own tech issue a little faster. But fortunately, sure. we were able to come back and be able to answer these Q&A questions. So you can't always rely on the Rebro to save you in a pinch. But um, both Rebro and Rare Rebro, I think Rare Rebro among the Rebro population is even more, more. Uh, intelligent, and they and they and they reinforce their uh, cranial their helmets because noodle exactly as you know a common rebro uh, has sort of there. an open air brain, and the rare rebro has that protective helmet because it's got a brain that it wants to preserve. Does that makes sense. Um, Plump Dog 012. He's got a, a tough one. Okay. I'm ready. Would you rather adopt a baby Riff or a baby Sponge? Mm. I believe these two came together, did they not? That's right. They were discovered the simultaneously in Dawn of Fire. Um, no offense to the cuteness of the baby Sponge. I myself would, would be interested in raising an adorable little young riff. He does have a, a pretty, riff, a riff youngster. He does have a pretty cute uh, guitar there. That's right. And um, in the discovery of riff, we learned a little bit more about the life cycle and the symbiosis that appears between these two, uh, these two creatures, and the fact that the young riff's guitar is actually a simulation. It's not actually yet yes. its living symbiotic partner. It's sort of like, you know those babies? Yes, test them. Yes, the test babies. <laughs> no, that's not what I'm saying. <laughs> no, what are you saying? I read like you know those practice. Home... No, 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 no. You know those home economics classes where you oh, have yes, 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 just yes, to yes, make yes, sure yes. that you know all of what it takes in order mm -hmm. to make sure that you are meeting the baby's needs? Yes. It's sort of like Much one of like those. That. It's, what, it's exactly like one of those. And of course, at the same time, it also is practicing its moves. You can see that it has, uh, it still creates music. Yes, yes, yes. Well, in that case, I will gladly adopt. You'll take the sponge. The sponge. Beware the ooze, my friend. And that's okay. He's such a cutie. Yeah, he is very cute. Um, Strimey's the Tweed Forty Nine uh, asks once again, "How do choristers eat? Who tastes the food? And do they all share the same digestive system?" Whew. This is. Uh, uh, a very stumpy question for yeah. Monster Handler Matt. This, oh, is no. a, this is the borderline stone. Do we have a stone question? Um, so we know that the Chorister is actually a collection of unique creatures that sort of fuse together because there are strength in numbers. Strength in numbers. Um, so presumably each of these creatures has their own digestive system as opposed to having a collective digestive that, system. That would seem to make sense. But it could be that this particular digestive system, because the chorister is rock-like, mm -hmm. that the way that they metabolize things, uh, they're able to use 100% of the food. Yeah. And it'd be one of those things that it'd probably be pretty difficult to like, uh, like get an x-ray or something and like see, see through. Like because that. it's so dense. Yeah, exactly. Right? Because it right. is, because the consistency resembles earth rocks. Yeah. So And that's 
our Earth, the human world Earth, not the element of Earth. Of course, of course. Um, Cab or Cabwax uh, asks, when is those singing monsters supposed to air and on what channel? That's a good question. Uh, those singing monsters, for those of you who don't know, is the TV show that is going to be based on my singing monsters that will be coming out. Uh, we ourselves right now don't have any details that we're prepared to share with anyone yet because the show is still in development. Yeah, we're still pretty. working on it. Uh, as soon as we do have information that we're ready to share, we will be sure to do so with You'll the community. You'll be the, the first, first to know. In fact, uh, uh, with any luck, and I'm hoping that it will be, my Sing Monsters Live will continue to grow and grow, and perhaps we'll even make that announcement one day. Oh, on I my Sing love. Monsters Live, that would be an exciting opportunity to premiere that information. But as of right now, um, you know everything that we do, and we're still uh, developing that particular project. But don't worry, you'll get, you'll, you'll, you'll learn. Well, let's oh. go. Well, I have a, another hot topic here from uh, Monster Handler Sydney. Apparently, we have lots of trivia questions. Oh, good. I'm... I forgot to say that uh, when we had our whole technical difficulties. Mm -hmm. that. Uh, we want trivia questions. If you could provide the question and answer that is 1,000% what we are looking for. Uh, That's a lot of percent. Exactly. We are looking to stump, oh. as we said. Uh, monster Handler Matt here. My head becomes a stump, like yes. that great piece yes. of art. Like that so wonderful monster piece. Um, and, uh, yeah, and you know what? Maybe in the future, if we got enough of these trivia questions, we might have a whole fun trivia trivia segment here where we have multiple Monster, ha monster Handlers. Ooh, and we can maybe action. buzz in or something yes. like that to see for those of yes. you, us that, 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 that know. That would be a lot of fun. Yes, exactly. So, let me go down here. All right, let me just adjust my... Ooh, there my, are uh, some here. I have not looked at these yet. Okay. I can't, can't have you looking. All right. Um, let's go with a discovery question. Okay. Discovery question for $100. I'm slouching because it helps me think. Yeah, that's okay. Hmm. Um, Lay them on me. Jaden, okay. 1847, asks, when were the rares discovered? Now, first, if you want, if you want to take this in pieces, uh, we can go by the year or however you want. You need to do it. The rares were discovered. I know definitively. Ooh, be I like know bold. the month. I know the month and the year. Okay. The day is going to pose a problem. Okay, so give me the give me the year. The broadest. I know that I know that the year was two thousand and fourteen. You are correct. I know that the month was the tenth. October. <laughs> when you said 10th, I was the like, the 10th month. The 10th is not a month. <laughs> the October. What month is it? 10th. You are correct. All right. So October 2014. And I know it was early October okay. because anniversary month had just ended. And it was and it was relating to an update that we released to My Singing Monsters. But what is the day? You know what? I'm going to... I really want you to get it, but I'm going to give you within one day on either side. If you, if you get it within one day on either side, okay, I'm seeing not a, stump. I'm seeing a particular shape in my brain. Yeah. I think October 9th. That doesn't sound like you a know promising what? sound. You know what? You were seeing a number in your mind, and you were so close because if you turn that number upside down, you have a six, and it was October 6, 2014. That is a stump. 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 <laughs> All right, I accept it. Uh, okay, let's see. Uh, let's see if you what can else? Text what else have you sent me? A technical question. Uh oh. Oh, perhaps good. Maybe that's good. All right, I'm listening. How many servers does it take to run my same monsters? <laughs> so the only exposure that I have. To we have somebody just outside that would be able to answer. Oh, us. that's right. Uh, so the the only time that I have interacted with the servers is when I'm a breaking them, <laughs> or b when I am chewing a fur corn that has been chewing on the cables <sighs> out of the server room. Uh, uh, this is not a particular field of monster <laughs> handling that I'm that familiar with. So I tell you what, I'm going to make a guess. Uh, I'm going to say that it requires. Eight. Eight servers. Close. Really? Unfortunately, it is 
12. Oh, so that is that's a two thirds of the way there. Stop! Oh man, two for two. Yeah. Okay, that's keep them cool. coming. Keep them coming. Oh, you'll get this one. All right. Okay. Bogart fan. Yes. How many monsters came into version 1.0 of Dawn of Fire? So when we launched Dawn of Fire, how many monsters? Oh my goodness, are you not going to know this? This is this is a this is a big question. Okay. This is a. This is a uh, I think it was in the neighborhood of 30. Okay. Do I, do I get the same plus minus rule in this one? I mean... I'm going to say 29. Oh, I'm so close. What was it? 27. Oh, stumped again! Stumped. At least I'm in the right neck of the woods, but not the right land of the continent. Okay. Anyway. Uh... Xander Rock 98 asks, Come on, guys, give me some easy ones. You're, you're making me look bad here. How many ice cubes does Beach have? Ooh. Ooh. I think you might get this one. You seem like you, you seem confident, at least. Fourteen? Oh, stump again! Stumped. It's eleven. It's eleven. Oh my goodness! So you need that, to do so some. Does that mean study in six, here? Six and five is the is the array. Um, who can who can say? Maybe well, we can maybe, pull up a picture of, of Deej. Yeah, if you can find a picture of Deej on the uh, the controls. Because I'd be curious. Every every time that I'm stumped. I resolve that I'll never be stumped by that question again. This is that true. it's information that I'll be able to uh, remember. Okay. Um, ask your, sorry about if I don't get the name right. How many steps does it take to reach the end of Galvana's constellation? Mm. <sighs> yeah, 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 I see you doing that. I think so. The immortal jolt constellation that appears in the monster world sky that aligns with our month of July. July. I think. I'm pretty sure. Has, I believe, 20 steps. You stumped again? Stumped again? Can you get one of these right? Well, first of all, um, I'll tell you the answer in a second, but we have... Um, so we have a Deej here. Deej coming up. You can inspect him and just... Okay, so we've goes. got... He's getting big. One, two, five, three, four, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right. So you were correct I about can, the I can six. see it. I know, that, I know that there were two arrays. Uh, and so, for <laughs> so the immortal jolt has how the many immortal steps? Has twenty-four. Twenty-four steps. Okay, let's see if I can get you one here. Oh, okay. Ooh, I like this. Multiple choice. Give us multiple oh, choice. Good. That's great. That's good. I like a little bit of diversity, especially for monster handlers in training. Uh, having a multiple choice would probably help them. Okay. Who was the first rare monster ever to be discovered? Is it? A, rare Naga. B, rare Furcon. C, rare Wabox. Or D, rare Geo. I'll do you one better. I'll tell you the order that they were discovered in. Okay, now you're, now you're just like showboat. This is stuff I can do. So, notably, rare Furcon was the first rare monster to be discovered. Yes. Rare Noggin was the last of the natural rares to be discovered. Then Rare Wubox was discovered and then Rare Geo because Rare Ethereals were discovered after the Rare Supernatural Wubox had been unearthed, revealed. So you got made, it, made itself known. All right, there's one. And I added, can, can, can we count that as two? Yes. Because he I, because I un, unstumped. He got one right. All Congratulations. Right. There we go. Uh, let's do, do you want to do another trivia and then maybe just a few more questions before we wrap up? That sounds great. Okay. Um, 
Oh, you should. I think you're. I think you're gonna know. This okay. Part. How many numbers and letters are in friend codes? So, I know for a fact there are two letters. Well, that's the easy part. That's the easy part. The numbers in friend codes varies. Does it? Yep. Depends on how long you've been playing my singing monsters. Well, what's the lowest they can be? Four digits, I believe. Really? I believe so. I I always thought it would have just been like zero. But they're random. Zero, zero, zero. But they are. But they are to an extent randomly assigned. Hmm. I think I'm gonna have to further investigate this with some technical people. Um, so far, so I don't know. that's maybe, my understanding. Maybe correct on this one. Okay. Xander Rock ninety eight seems to think there was eight numbers too. Um, I'm sure that that's certainly the case for the this current generation, generation that we're going through of my singing monsters players. Well, I will be investigating. I will report back. Uh, okay, so let's do... All right, so back, back to some questions. Back to some questions. Okay. We'll do three more questions. Okay. Three more questions. Then, of course, we'll do the final giveaway. Sounds good. You know. All um, right, I'm prepared. The Monster Explorers ask, do dipsters make homes underground, or do they rest on the surface of the island? So are they... Maybe down there burrowing, or is it just like they're like squishifying almost? I see. That, Dips, that would be the, my the, the natural habitat of a dipster is deep underground. The dipsters that are placed on the islands that appear in my single monsters have been coaxed to the surface. Okay. So they're sort of awaiting uh, their time to perform in the song in a state of readiness just below the ground because. You know, but they've like, got like they, other, where they are. They've dug out a small little place for them. I assume that the, the tunnel networks extend deep underground, okay. but because they're waiting for their it's kind of like they're waiting on the curtain, right? Like exactly, they're exactly. Design. They're in the wings, so to speak, despite being wingless monsters themselves. Okay, confirmed. We do have a confirmation. Friend code limit four digits minimum, eight max, right now. Constantly growing. There you right. go. So, so we're all sort of. We right. are all right. Uh, I will give that to you. I will also give that to Xander Rock. Oh, good. I like sharing things anyway. Um, Mr. Spud8 okay. asks What happened to Epic Emprat's hair? Because, as we all know, with the discovery of Epic Emprat, he mm -hmm. is like very thin and uh, it looks as though he's lost because he has the little. Right. There's, there, there are some sort of what, hair like kind of protrusions yes. along. The epic and brats farms. So, so far as we know, despite the fact that the ant brat is a living organism separate from a tree, many of the uh, traits of a tree apply in the sense that because epic ant brat enjoys spending a good portion of its time indoors, not out atmospherically taking in the sun, the air, the wind, the getting sky, tan. stuff like that, getting a tan. Um, photosynthesis does not occur as much. And oh, so and brat exactly. And brat the the nature of its leaves and beard, I think, is dependent on how much exposure it has to the sun, how much water it takes in. So, that makes sense. like a plant itself, if uh, a plant does not get as many resources to make itself. Uh, have these bushy green leaves mm -hmm. it won't they won't be as uh strong necessarily and they will fall off but as no also noted in the epic and brats bio uh no need to feel any sort of concern the epic and brat is not unhealthy it's just something preference. that it's just a matter of preference it's just something a little different about the way it behaves interesting um oh I had one here that I wanted to ask you. Um, D Warrior asks, how far are each islands from each other? Mm -hmm. Are they in different monster galaxies? Or is there some sort of, this is me elaborating, is there some sort of close proximity which these um, islands kind of 
each of the oh, natural geez. islands all exist in the same first of all they all exist in the same dimension of reality that's that's the natural islands we're speaking about strictly now. natural so we're not talking about gold island we're not talking that's about gold. right gold and ethereal notably have their own pocket dimensions that they exist in Wobblin, I think we talked about briefly. Wobblin is also in the same uh, state of reality that the natural islands are. But let, let's zero in on the natural yes. islands for a quick second. Um, they are all separated by a great distance. Okay. So they, it's not like I can see, look off from Plant Island, see. Uh, That's right. Earth they're, Island they're, off there. They're, they're, they're quite a bit of ways. A ways away from each other. Okay. Um, why this physical separation exists, we still don't fully understand, um, and we don't know if it has anything to do with uh, the Colossals, so that's still something that we don't fully understand, but they do still all exist in the same world, in the monster world, they just they exist at a great distance from each other. Makes sense to me. Um, so I think we're going to have our last question. Um, if you guys do enjoy this, I know we have a ton of questions coming in still. Uh, you know, maybe this is something that we could do uh, again in the near future. As long as there are questions, there will be answers. Yes, because we, we love doing this. We commit to that. Yes. Um, let's find... Okay. Uh, from Chorus Kids. Uh, they say why, but I think they meant what did Scuffs used to, no, why did Scuffs used to look like that? Was it a flute monster at first? The art that Chorus Kids is referring to is an early concept drawing of Scuffs okay. where it was uh, noticeably leaner. It had, it had skinnier limbs oh, and, and, the top, and the top of its head does not feature the now familiar to uh, trumpet-like apparatuses that appear on top. It instead had uh, reeds on them that look almost like uh, the decoration of wild bagpipes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. And that can still be observed in certain elements of the game's uh, user interface and heads-up display. You can see yep. them sometimes on loading screens or on the edges of yeah. menus. Um, this was just an early look for Scups before it was finalized to its current incarnation. I believe that the Scups' sound was always intended to be akin to that of a toilet plunger, but that how that that sound was released, we were still deciding on. And that's like, I, I know, uh, we've shown before many times through social and stuff, like there are tons of different ways that monsters used to work, right? That's right. There's uh, a lot of creativity here at Big Blue Bubble and multiple directions that we can choose to go in at any given time. There's no shortage of great ideas. Uh, here and we're inspired by all sorts of different things from the real world when crafting singing monsters and Not to like spoil, but I'm fairly certain uh, Got to be this prepared to come Thursday uh, We do have another one of those This is what a monster at one time was if you're remembering correctly I think I know what you're yes. talking about. Yes, yes. so we there's today tuned to Thursday uh, you'll be able to see another old design of a monster. The, the last comment that I'd like to make, if we are, in fact, wrapping up. Uh, I believe we close? are. We're, we are definitely close. We're going to do the giveaway. I, I oh, have, of course. I have another thing I want to say as well. All right, no, let's do the giveaway. Ahead. No, no, no. I'll say that. Okay. Later. The only thing I wanted to mention is, is that uh, many of you have been uh, commenting on and asking about uh, our most recent post oh. to our social channels. <laughs> How could I forget? I know. Exciting this time this is an exciting time. Uh, many of you have picked up on, on the details of this post as being deeply unusual. Uh, at this point, we know just about as much as you do. So stay tuned to our social channels over the next little while. And perhaps all will be made clear. But it, it looks to me, from some of the details that, that people have commented on so far, that Shrub, at least. Yes. Clearly, that is among, a among the monsters, um, it is taking a closer look at what appears to be a cave painting. It clearly looks like cave painting. Now, we know of one location in the monster world where cave paintings can take place, 
Um, but that has been, so far as I know, sealed off for quite a long time. There was an expedition some time ago that was led down there, but um, that was many, many years ago. So we haven't heard the exact context. The exact context of this post is still something of a mystery to us. So we're interested in hearing your thoughts on what this could yes. possibly mean. So make sure to visit our social channels, take a look at those posts, and. Uh, if you're able to leave a comment yeah, talk or, amongst or join the discussion about what this could possibly mean for the future of my singing monsters um it's certainly mysterious very very mysterious uh i'm excited to you know see is there more to discover well it it, it looks know? it looks from, it looks like it looks like there's more it looks there. from the snippet that we observe that this is just a a, a portion of, of perhaps a, a larger thing but I guess you'll have to tune in to our social channels to find out. Yes. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll be talking about if there are any more discoveries in the near future. Certainly. You can count uh, on us covering such things on future episodes of My Singing Monsters Live. Which, if you weren't here, as we said, is going to be every Friday, 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Most likely going to go for an hour. Sometimes we go, will go longer. I know we've gone longer today because we've had so many great questions from you. Uh, and uh, yeah, it is, uh, it is great. There's one more thing we wanted to uh, address from the surveys. Uh, one of the things we had a lot of people talking about is that they really enjoyed Extra Life and they enjoyed uh, seeing us play games and playing games with us. I know there was a lot of... Uh, Specifically me being bad at Yes, games. yes, you're, you're, you can be good at games. Sometimes. Sometimes. Sometimes um, I can find the right fit. <laughs> exactly, you find your lane. You That's right, your lane. exactly, I'll stick to my lane. Um, and I, I know we played uh, Fortnite with one of the community members, and we played a lot of Jackbox with uh, a lot of the community members. So one thing we would like to do, uh, and we are still finalizing the details on this, uh, this week, I'm thinking Thursday as of right now, probably doing a Thursday 5 p.m. slot as we have kind of done with these last two and going forward. Uh, we are hoping to play uh, Jackbox games with the community. Specifically, we are going to be making monster-themed games in some of those Jackbox games. So uh, we would love to have you there. And I'm going to be involved in the crafting of some of these uh, questions. And you'll be here to play. Well, I'll be here to play. I want to make sure that there's some impartiality. So yes, if I yes, come yes, up yes. with the questions, I don't want to zoom in with all the answers. No, no. But um, I will be helping to craft and contribute to the creation of this uh, Jackbox. So you'll know that it is Monster Handler approved and exactly. verified. Um, and with that, I don't believe we have any more announcements for today, except for... Our third and final winner for today. And of course, I think this is, this is pretty nice that we went into today thinking that we would be giving one monster away, give it three. and now we've given away three. That's and, and just remember that anytime we do one of these streams, we will be doing a giveaway for sure. So it's always worthwhile to tune in. Always worth tuning in. Um, and you know, while you're at it, why don't you uh, follow us on Twitch if you have not. Uh, but today's winner is Karma Squabbit. Or Squabbit. Karma, Karma Squabbit. Squabbit. Congratulations. Great job, Karma Squabbit. Send us a quick little message. Um, a whisper on Twitch. A whisper on Twitch. Uh, I will also just follow up. Remember we asked who uh, people were selecting? Mm. Megs to the max asked for a Yule. Ah. We are getting to that time of the season. Very close. Yeah. And uh, Iggy Rosado asked for a Plixie. Ah, the Celestial of Plasma. So, great choices. Thank you very much for being here today with us. It was a great time. Let us know what you thought about, um, you know, leave us comments on. And we'll be doing some more. So, exactly. stay tuned to uh, the interest events. coming, and we'll uh, be committed to answering your questions and continuing to be your foremost source of all things related exactly. to my saying monsters. So, I guess until next time, happy signing monster. off. Oh, happy happy monster. Bye.